talk about. Bruce Hawker, political strategist, joins me. How are you, Bruce? I'm very well, Good to have Paul. you with us again. As always, Richard Alston, former Liberal Cabinet Minister, is with us too. Richard, good morning to you. Morning, Paul. Um, let's start with Alan Jones and his apology, but firstly his comments. Is there a danger that we are blowing the bejesus out of these, uh, out of these comments, Bruce? I mean, obviously he shouldn't have said them. He has basically apologised. Oh, look, I think it was a, uh, a bridge too far from Alan Jones. I think it just overstepped all commonly accepted standards mm -hmm. of decency in Australia, and I think a lot of people will be very, very offended by it. I hope a lot of people who what, listen to that program were deeply offended by it too. But but it was Alan Jones, and if you look at the and and this is not in any way defending the actual remarks, but I think it does mitigate to an extent the remarks that it was him. He's known for bitterly criticising Julia Gillard. He he ran away with himself. He has apologised. Is it time to let it go? Uh, well, I'm not sure that the apology was anything less than uh, you know half baked really. And I don't think it necessarily is time for, to let it go. I think he's gone beyond the pale. It's one thing to have strident criticism of a government and what they do, and I don't think anyone would ever uh, deny his right to do that. It's when he gets into this deeply personal area mm -hmm. and his, you know, and he's got a very deep association with the Liberal Party too. That was a Liberal Party fundraiser. Yep. There were Liberal Party uh, officials and uh, members of Parliament there, none of whom saw fit to say anything about it, to walk out, to uh, express disgust. Well, let's talk Tony Abbott. Should he actually, as some are saying, apologise to the Prime Minister for those remarks or is it good enough that he has just himself condemned them? Well, I don't know that he has to apologise mm. for Alan Jones, but I do think he has to make it very clear that he doesn't have any truck with this. Which he has a, done. And, which he has done. Yes, but it is a pattern of behaviour on Jones's part and I think if Abbott was serious about uh, really having nothing to do with him, he wouldn't go on his program. You would, you would also perhaps think twice before you called him to be a guest speaker. Indeed. Um, Richard, I think the Prime Minister has handled this very, very well by refusing to take his call. Yes, I wouldn't have take I wouldn't take the call either in her situation. I can understand her position and I think it's quite clear that uh, everyone without exception regards these remarks as totally indefensible. Should he lose his job though as Wayne Swan is suggesting? Uh, well, it's quite clear that Labor is uh, doing its very best to turn this into a a Liberal Party statement yes. rather than the statement of someone outside the party speaking at a private function off the cuff. Now, that's not in any shape or form to excuse what he Absolutely. said, but it's not the same as making a prepared statement on air. Uh, he obviously got uh, caught up in the emotion of the evening and uh, his tongue ran away with his head. Well, but, it's interesting because uh, I agree with you, but I can see Bruce different. out the corner of my eye shaking his head in disagreement. No, well, this was a Liberal Party event. It wasn't some... Uh, it wasn't a discussion he was having in his kitchen. It was a Liberal Party event. He said these things, and that makes it a Liberal Party issue, whether uh, Richard likes it or not. All right. Um, well, very quickly, he, he ended... He, he tried to defend himself in the newspaper this morning in a column that he wrote, and he ended with this line, and I just very quickly want your, your views on this. This may be the worst and least trustworthy government in Australian history. Richard, is he right? Um, look, I was around in the Whitlam years, and oh. um, I've got to, got to say there's a, a lot of comparisons. Uh, look, if you're talking about whether Alan Jones is entitled to say what he's saying, uh, of course he is, but... Uh, and uh, I think there are a lot of people out there who would think that uh, the hung parliament, the deal with the Greens, all the broken Comes promises, close. all sorts of things make this a, a very discreditable government. What do you think about that statement? Oh, look, it just goes to what Alan Jones is all about. He just tries to turn defeat into victory every time. It wasn't really an apology. Uh, it was really another opportunity to attack the government. And, and you make that point, tries to turn defeat into uh, um, victory. Uh, he was also trying to deflect some of the blame to the journalist who... And that may Indeed. be loathsome journalism, but it is in no way uh, an opportunity to Well, deflect. I recommend that everybody read the, uh, his piece in the, in the Telegraph today. Mm -hmm. He explains how he just went online and got a yep, ticket. Absolutely. It was a public absolutely. event. I, hope, I just hope that the, uh, the 2GB has a good hard look at itself and uh, Alan Jones and I hope that the listeners do and I hope that the people that advertise on his program do You might well. hope that but I'm sure none of those things will happen. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, last week, I know the project on, on Network 10 um, poked the fun at him for holding up uh, Richard the picture of the bomb. He is very concerned about uh, Iran. We are going for a seat on the Security Council. Do you think we have the fortitude as a country on the Security Council to declare war? 
Uh, I think that might be a little premature to say the least, Paul, but the reality, of course, is that uh, this is not a significant position we're going for. You've only got to look at who the other yep. contenders are. Words are bullets, nonetheless, and I think uh, we do have an obligation, if we get there, to uh, make our position clear. Now, the reality is the Americans aren't going to do anything on Iran prior to the election. And one of the things that would concern me is that uh, in lobbying for this seat, I think the Australian government sent a delegation to Tehran not too long back. So uh, I think they will need to, to be in a position to make clear what their views are on whether it's acceptable yes. for Iran to s simply keep going down this path. It's interesting because it seems to me that Benjamin Netanyahu was talking out of frustration. Uh, you know, he was trying to make things as plain as possible and something needs to be done soon. Oh, uh, imagine what it's like living in Israel with uh, this madman uh, you know, getting a nuclear capability. I mean, you've got to have some sympathy for them, notwithstanding whatever is happening in Palestine. Absolutely. I love some real issues there. But uh, it... it I think the important thing here is that if Australia does get a seat on the Security Council, it will be in a position to make an informed uh, input into the decision, and that's the important thing here. You know, we uh, are in Afghanistan on a UN mandate. We're in East Timor on a UN mandate. We go into these wars, and uh, and I think we should have a say in whether the we The trouble is the UN one. seems to be the wrong forum to handle things as serious as this situation that is brewing in. It's the only one we do that. And, and, yeah, yes, you're right. Um, and, and a very quick word, if you were doing a report card on um, Bob Carr for his handling of the Alexandra Bean um, affair, You'd have to give him a 10 out of 10, wouldn't you? Yeah, he's very good at these things. Yeah, he uh, he's uh, he, he's a, a great recruit into the federal labour ranks. Yeah, of my yeah. Opinion. he's done he's done very well. Would you agree with that, Richard? Uh, yes, they're very good at uh, retail politics. <laughs> that is damning with faint praise. Or, in fact, it's damning with no praise at all. Um, <laughs> Richard Alston and Bruce Hawker, thank you both very much for joining us. Pleasure. Now, just with respect.